Hello and welcome to another colouring video. Today I'm going to be talking about priming your colouring book pages with products that make the paper able to take watercolour better and also coloured pencils better. Now I did make a video, I think it was last year or the year before, where I was doing some tests and I was using these two products here. I used the Daniel Smith watercolour ground, the transparent one and also a clear gesso by Windsor and Newton and I actually found that the clear gesso worked quite well in fact it worked better for me than this um, proper watercolour ground did since then I've come across other products that people have recommended to me that are even better than this so I mean they're not perfect they don't turn the paper into watercolour paper but they do very much improve it. Okay, so I'll show you the pictures that I completed using this and, and I'll talk about that. So in this book, I did this one here and I used watercolour pencils for that. Now this is a rough gesso, so the, going across that it actually feels like a fine sandpaper. That's actually quite good for watercolour pencils because Obviously when you, you're putting the pencil to the paper, it, because it's rough, it's getting loads of that pigment onto the paper really quickly. So the only downfall I found of the roughness was it's really difficult to get tiny fine details. And I'll show you on this picture that I did. And I'll just do a close-up of the face. Now that was really, it's quite patchy, so it's you know it's really difficult to get a really smooth finish when you when you look closely at the fine detail so it's not absolutely terrible I do like it and I also did this picture with this gesso so I don't dislike the gesso at all but I have found something better since then I would you know I would still definitely use this it, you know there's no problem a lot of people do not like that rough sandpaper. I've heard people saying that they just don't like the roughness of it. Like I say, it doesn't really bother me, but you couldn't use this for your markers because it would probably just really ruin the nibs. So then a lady suggested to me in the comments that I use this Art Basics clear gesso and she said that she uses it as a base for coloured pencils in colouring books and she said it was absolutely brilliant and I tried it and it was. So it's excellent for coloured pencils and it worked for the watercolour paint as well so that was absolutely brilliant so it worked well with watercolour paint and watercolour based products such as Derwent ink tens pencils the only problem with using gesso is when you go to put a second layer of watercolour down it lifts really really easily um, now then somebody suggested well it was actually Faith she has a YouTube channel as well it's called Faithful Mess and she said to me try the satin glazing liquid it works great with intense pencils that's what she uses it for I tried it and it worked absolutely brilliant and it worked better as a watercolour base than the, the, jet, the clear gesso so basically the clear gesso is a great primer for coloured pencil and the satin glazing liquid is a great primer for watercolour paint but again it it's not as good as watercolour paper and I'll show you why. Okay, so I'm going to do some tests in this Harry Potter book. Okay, so I've got a section for the satin glazing fluid, a section for the smooth clear gesso, a section for the gritty clear gesso and a, just a plain section with nothing on it so we can look at the differences. And I've also got a piece of watercolour paper as well so that I can show you how these three products act compared to the watercolour paper. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint those on. I'm going to do, I think I'll do two layers of each. I normally do three layers if I'm doing a colour and book page just to make sure nothing's going to seep through there onto the back page. But I'll just do two layers just for the demonstration purposes. Oh, 
okay so first of all I'm going to start with a couple of ink tense pencils and I'm just going to demonstrate the difference between normal paper watercolor paper and these sections that I've primed with those products they're not actually supposed to be primers for watercolor but they do actually work okay so I'll just lay um, some of this ink tents down I don't know if you can see or not but the Art Basics clear gesso you, if you use a oops if you use a paintbrush you, it's very difficult to get rid of all the lines because it's quite thick it's quite a thick consistency but with the satin glazing fluid another benefit is it completely dries flat you don't get any brush marks and you can see how on the gritty gesso it's fine for like watercolour but it just turns to powder like you can't use coloured pencils on it okay so I've tried it on all five different surfaces when I'd actually put the pencil down it left a mark on the watercolour paper it left a mark on the plain paper it completely dissolved on the gritty clear gesso and the smooth clear gesso it completely dissolved and on the satin glazing fluid it completely dissolved so straight away you can see the benefit of using a primer already for the ink tense pencils because it's just so much easier to get a smooth lay down of colour when it's not going to mark the paper like here and here okay so I've let this all dry now if you wanted to lift a bit of the paint back out if you wanted to add a highlight once the paint is dried or maybe you just wouldn't want this harsh edge here so if you go back in with a wet paintbrush and try and rub at the edge it's not really doing much on the watercolour paper I'll try and lift a little bit out to create a highlight kind of does a little bit but it's not easy and then I'm pretty sure the plain paper will be the same it's like once it's down it's down but that is what ink tent is supposed to do so that's okay but where you've laid down a primer that easily lifts back up so then I can then go and blend that dry edge and I can also lift out a little piece if I wanted a highlight and I can do that on all of these primers No, not so much the art basics gesso. It's not letting me do it with the art with the art basics gesso. But it will with the glazing fluid. Okay, so basically out of the five different surfaces, the satin glazing fluid is the winner for the ink tense pencils because you've got the best of both worlds you can lift it if you want to but it doesn't lift too easily doesn't seep through either I'll turn the page over it does not does not seep through onto the other side of the page where it hasn't either on the plain paper um, 
but it, it could do if you put too much colour down okay so another thing I wanted to show you was um, the coloured pencils so first of all I'm using um, the Derwin Pro colour now it's usually difficult to get a deep colour down on smooth colour and book paper with these so I'm going to demonstrate I'll just colour a little piece in and I'm just using average pressure I'm not pressing too hard or too light and now I'll repeat that on the other ones so the gritty gesso you can see how it's grabbing the colour the colour looks really deep but it's just powdery and it's probably just going to do that with my finger and it's just rubbing off so that's absolutely no good on that gritty gesso there's really no point in doing that and then the satin glazing fluid it's kind of okay it works better than the plain paper definitely an improvement and then the smooth clear gesso it what it just works so good it's just so it just lays down it's completely different the way it lays down it's like the perfect well almost perfect if you could get rid of those brush marks it would in the gesso it would be absolutely perfect that literally makes these go down like as as though they were prismacolor pencils it makes it feel like really soft it just I mean look at the depth in the colour compared to the others oh, that's the plain paper okay so now I'll just try some watercolour paint on the five different surfaces so first of all I'll put some on the watercolour paper and I'll leave it to dry I'll put some on the plain paper I don't know if you can see it it's acting a little bit strange on the clear gesso I'll just do that again to show you how it's kind of just gathering up into uh, like a bead in the middle yeah it's doing it a little bit on the satin glazing fluid as well so this is the problem the only kind of problem I mean if you just want to you know just paint a little section it's absolutely fine but obviously when you if you want to use a lot of liquid and do such as wet in wet technique it really hinders what you're trying to do so for example there's a wet in wet technique if you're not familiar with watercolors you can wet your paper first say you wanted for example to do a, a nice blue sky in the background you could wet your paper first and then you can drop the paint in and it, it'll, it'll spread into the water it'll just spread out and then you just leave it and it'll just carry on spreading and then you can you know dab little parts out while it's still wet to create okay I lost a little bit of footage there sorry I just tried to create the same effect on the satin glazing fluid so you can see the difference between the two 
the watercolour paper's got the gorgeous soft blends and this one just looks quite streaky okay so now I'm going to try one of these Zig clean colour real brush and I'm going to put a layer down I'm going to let it dry and then I'm going to try and lift out some highlights and I'll do that on all four surfaces So I'm being extra careful, I'm doing this so lightly on this rough gritty gesso because I don't want to ruin the end of the brush. Probably shouldn't have done this at all actually, I would absolutely not recommend this simply because it will ruin the brush. Okay, so I've let those dry and now I'm going to see how liftable they are. So that's the satin glazing fluid, so you can easily add highlights into that one. And then the Art Basics, that's even easier, I mean I'm barely touching it with the water so that's maybe a little bit too easy and it would mean that if you put any layers over the top it's probably just going to lift the underneath layers. The Gritty Gesso Yeah, it seems to be lifting fine as well, not too easily, but just fine. And I mean look at the depth of the colour as well on that gritty gesso, it's, it's really nice. I mean if you can get over the fact that it feels gritty and just use cheap synthetic brushes, you know, don't use like real animal hair brushes. Yeah if you can get over the fact that it's gritty, it is, it is a really nice primer to use for watercolour. Um, obviously not them real brushes because it'll ruin the brush but just if you're using watercolour and cheap watercolour brushes I think it, it's ideal. Um, now the plain paper mm -hmm, yeah it's actually working better than I expected it to it's lifting a lot easier than I thought it would Oh, it's not really so very smooth it's you have to really work at blending those edges because it just wherever you put the water it's just lifting but the paper of course is all peeling up I can it's you know it's, it's kind of rubbing the surface of the paper up and I mean look how dark it's gone it's gone very very dark Okay, and then the watercolour paper. The colour just doesn't really look that good on the watercolour paper compared to all the others. See, it's just different surfaces are better for different things.
Okay, so out of all those, I think I think this one turned out better. But you can't use those pens on this because it'll just ruin the ends. So I, I think the again the satin glazing fluid is is definitely the next best for the um, for the zig clean colour brushes. I mean you can see that. Look at that. That's dark and just not very nice compared to the these other colours. Okay, so for the blobs of watercolour paint that I put down. I've let them all dry so they're all completely dry now and I'm gonna see which ones will reactivate so that one does really well it's not leaving any marks where it originally was so you could probably actually just completely remove it if you made a mistake almost nearly gone now the Art Basics clear gesso that lifts but doesn't lift quite as easily but, it, but you can completely get rid of your paint if you wanted to and the same with this one as well you can just completely lift it and this is a um, this is a phthalo blue watercolour paint that I used as well which is pretty staining but it's, it's lifting off these surfaces absolutely fine um, the plain paper It's lifting some of it I can drag the color down so you know you could lift some highlights but the paper is rubbing off the surface it's going lumpy and it's rubbing off the surface so that doesn't really work very well and then the watercolor paper You can get highlights out but you can't completely remove it so the watercolor papers like the in-between it's kind of that's how we that's how it should be it shouldn't lift too easily but you should be able to lift out of watercolor paper okay so the final conclusion is this is better for watercolor paint Derwin intense pencils and also the zig clean color so it's basically going to be the best for any water based or water soluble product and then this stuff was really good for the coloured pencils and the drawback the big drawback is it's just so difficult to get a smooth finish on a large area with this satin glazing fluid but, but it can be done and I'm going to make another video about how to do that it's a bit tricky but it can be done okay so i hope that video has been informative and thank you very much for watching and i'll put amazon links to all these products below in the video description